city for years over what to do about the city's golf courses, particularly Leicester, but also fixes to anger. What's the right way forward for Duluth Golf and the space that those courses occupy? Roger, you have one minute. Sure. And first of all, um, I am interested in restarting the conversation about a different future for Leicester. It isn't the only land that we have in Duluth that's available to build on. We have passionate groups that are interested in a future for it, not just golfers, but also birders. Um, Sam Cook, thank you for talking to me about the opportunity for dark skies there. Um, once we lose these green spaces, they don't come back. And yet there is an opportunity to do both and, to have housing development as well as to maintain 18 holes of public golf there. But we need to sit down and talk that through and see what's viable and what isn't. And citizens can't submit, I mean they can submit <laughs> RFPs, but they're not going to be able to do it in a way that's going to be successful. And Dan, to your question, it's one thing. It's nonprofit management of both Anger and Lester, engaging the passionate residents who want to have oversight, who want to hire the um, leaders and the staff that are going to maintain it, who can accept volunteering, accept cash, cash contributions, and other donations. Thank you, Thank you Roger. Mayor Larson, if uh, re-elected, what's the right way forward for Duluth Golf in the space the courses occupy? Thank you for the question, and this is where details matter, because what I haven't heard from my opponent is any strategy, any of the deliverables on what it would look like to keep two golf courses open. I fully believe that it is one of my responsibilities as your mayor to have affordable recreation, full stop. You should have public golf, but it should be quality public golf. You don't deserve two poorly maintained, disinvested golf courses. You deserve a beautiful experience, and that is what we have spent since 2015 developing a plan to get done. We actually have a financial plan to put $5 million in at Anchor. It's gonna be gorgeous. I don't know what the financial plan is to make Lester work because it doesn't work. We have had this go through the city council, the parks commission, a golf group. We've had several RFPs, nothing has come in. And finally, we can't talk about needing more housing and needing to expand the tax base while protecting a few at one specific site without thinking of the greatest good. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger, you have 30 seconds to Great. respond. It doesn't work because we're committed to it not working, it seems. When you sit down and visit with smart people who have been involved with golf, who have been involved with other golf courses, and you take a look at the potential that nonprofit management might bring, it does work. It can work. Slight green fee increases and annual pass increases would have made the uh, lesser a net neutral, but that's not sufficient. We have to look at the year-round activities that will keep it moving forward and keep it active, Roger. and that's engaging um, passionate Roger, residents. Roger, thank you. Uh, 30 seconds to respond as well, Mayor Larson. Yes, thank you. I feel very strongly this is where we are hearing short-sighted politics of the moment to chase the campaign. Uh, and the reason is this. I fully trust the very, very smart people who have been working on this since 2015. Inconsistency on this issue has a cost. Inconsistency about a direction of a community and a development opportunity has a significant cost. The cost to us, we have to move forward. This is housing, this is opportunity. It is waiting, it is ready, and we'll be announcing it shortly. Mayor Larson, thank you so much.